Episode 101, An Exchange. What followed after the laughter was loud clapping sounds from the men surrounding them, but she didn't waste any time. She knew it was to momentarily distract her so that the men could pounce at her. She didn't care about the noise as she swung her body again. This time, the chair connected with something else. Instead of another body, a hand grabbed the leg of the chair, forcing her to remain in place. Because she was slightly hunched over, she couldn't see anything else other than the long legs of her captors. You put up quite a good fight. Someone spoke to her, his voice different from the leader. It was gruff and deep, similar to the men she knew who smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. Huh? She feigned confusion, pretending to relax her body and finally surrender. Right when she felt his grip on the chair loosen, she attempted to jump back and launch a surprise attack. The man's grip instantly tightened on the chair again, so much that she barely budged an inch. At lightning speed, a punch landed right into her abdomen. She choked at the pain that spread throughout her entire body. Is that the best you can do? She heaved. She wanted to taunt him to rile him up so that he would be so blinded by anger. In her mind, the best case scenario would be that he would toss her onto the ground and the impact would be able to break the chair. The worst case scenario is that he would pummel her into submission. It was the latter because right after she said that, he had roughly shoved her face into the floor, her forehead crashing against the hard surface. A pounding headache kicked in and her vision became hazy. Black dots tainted her vision as everything spun before her eyes. She was surprised she was still conscious after having been hit in the head so hard. Just then, a plan came to mind. Fake it till you make it, she thought to herself. She decided to taunt him more. Pathetic, that didn't even hurt. He slammed her head onto the ground again. This time, she could barely think straight from the pain and forced every inch of her to concentrate on her plan. She needed to anger him further. I guess you guys didn't cost that much because that was weak. Enraged, he let out a roar and flung her body to the side, the chair slamming into one of the crates, causing a loud bang that echoed within the warehouse. The sound of wood shattering into bits and pieces followed as the chair was now completely broken. Zoe ended up lying in the midst of various sizes of wooden shards, some of them sticking into her skin. She forced her body to go limp as her eyes slammed shut. She pretended the force had knocked her unconscious. Her heart was pounding so erratically, the only thing she could hear was the loud thumping of her heartbeat. She could barely hear the conversation going on. You overdid it again. Now she's knocked out. The leader sighed. His mood was completely ruined by the outcome of events. She wouldn't shut up, his burly friend replied, his voice as rough as ever. He disdainfully eyed the woman whose face had become ghostly white. Even if parts of her face were covered with the blood that had dripped from the wound on her forehead, her lips were busted, and a bruise had formed on one of her cheeks, her alluring face still shone. She's still a beauty, even after being beaten up, that he couldn't help but internally chide her for being in this circumstance. If only she had been smart and kept her mouth shut, she wouldn't have brought this upon herself. Boss said not to damage her face. Look at her. It's her best asset. He needed it for an exchange. The leader frowned, shaking his head in disappointment. He knew he shouldn't have brought Liam while dealing with her. He was simply too rough when it came to women. An exchange? What for? The leader shrugged. It's a woman. What else could it be for? He walked over to her, his ominous footsteps getting louder and louder as he approached Zoe. In exchange, Zoe became worried. It seems she's the bargaining chip for something, but for what? She thought about possible scenarios, but the only thing she could think of was human trafficking. But they would definitely not go to this extent in beating her up if it was for that purpose. She pushed this thought aside and listened to his footsteps. Her anxiety was rapidly increasing as he approached her. She could already tell what he was planning to do. She clenched her stomach, and just as she thought, he kicked her. He was checking to see if she was truly unconscious. It was extremely hard to ignore the pain that was pulsating throughout the entirety of her body. Every inch of her brimmed with agonizing pain, so much that she could barely think properly. 
Breathing had already been hard for her, and his fierce kick had made it even harder. Hmm, no reaction. She's knocked out for good. The leader tilted his head to his friend. How do you want to wake her up? Cold water to the face, or torturing her to the point where her own pain wakes her up? With how casual and bored he sounded, one would think he was simply discussing the weather. What do you think about the limb cutter? A voice answered, followed by another pair of footsteps. Boss forbade anything that would permanently disfigure her. He just wanted her to be brutally beaten up to be taught a lesson. We have three days to make sure that stubborn brain of hers won't work again. The leader replied, turning his head to his people. Bring the electric chair and crank it up to full intensity. He added, clapping his hands in glee at the idea of using his latest toy. The man who paid for her to be kidnapped and tortured had sent him the gift that he always wanted but never got around to buying because of how expensive it was. Now that he finally got what he wanted, he couldn't wait to test it out on her. Terrified at the idea of being tortured to the point of no return, so he knew she needed to escape as soon as possible. Episode 102, You're Awake. So he concentrated on her environment. Only a handful of people knew that she had combat training and the circumstances of how she got it. No one let this fact leak, and she was confident that whoever had planned on having her beaten into submission was not aware of that. Part of that training was being taught how to detect the presence around her. She counted at least 20 pairs of unique footsteps walking out of the room she was in. Their steps were generally heavier than the leader's, and she knew that the burly ones are all used to straightforward beating, unlike the leader's more creative and brutal ways of torture. She faintly remembered that there were at least 30 men who had entered the warehouse, which meant that around 10 people had been left behind to guard her. Peeling her eyes open, she saw that there was no one within her vicinity. They had left her lying on the floor, seemingly believing that she was truly unconscious, Although she was very close to losing her vision, her will to fight and survive was enough to push her body to stay awake. The ropes on her wrist and ankles had gotten uncontrollably tight from being tossed around. However, that didn't mean she couldn't try to cut her way out of it. Without the chair as an obstacle, she finally had access to her waistband. These morons must have been really stupid to have not conducted a full body check on her. But then again, she couldn't blame them because the location of her little weapon was hidden well. All of her clothing had a small flat blade hidden within it, and this pair of jeans was no exception. She strained her fingers so she could just reach the little opening near the leather label of her jeans. The label was at the back of her waistline, which made it harder to reach for. The task was incredibly strenuous since every little movement she made, the rope kept getting tighter and tighter. She was sure her fingers would lose circulation within the next few minutes if she didn't act fast. She kept her eyes closed as she spent the next minute attempting to grab the blade. She nearly sighed in relief upon feeling the cold metal against her fingers. Two minutes left. She attempted to cut the ropes, but the blade had been dull from all the months of not being used. Come on, she muttered quietly as she struggled to cut the rope. She felt that time was starting to run out for her, for her fingers were beginning to feel numb now. She knew there were only a few seconds left before her hands were completely unable to move any further. Time ticked and she could no longer feel her fingers. She wriggled her arms a bit and finished cutting the last piece of rope, and instantly blood was pumping into her fingers. The moment she had gotten her hands free, she knew she had to work fast on her ankles. However, she was not in a position where doing so will catch any attention. She took a deep, undetectable breath and opened her eyes a bit. She saw the warehouse door opening as a heavy green chair was brought in, along with several men hauling in some sort of machine to power it. The leader clapped his hands in glee, his eyes lighting up at the sight of his dream torture weapon. Wonderful. It's as beautiful as I've imagined, he happily said as he walked over to run his hand over the chair. Hurry up and connect it. Bring in the rest of the machines, he ordered, quickly reminding his men to grab the remaining supplies from the truck. He was about to follow them out of the warehouse, but then remembered why the chair was brought back in the first place. He started walking with them to exit the warehouse, but he suddenly did a quick turn to see if she was still unconscious. 
Zoe was thankful for her quick reflexes, which enabled her to immediately close her eyes the minute she saw he was about to turn around. Her arms remained in the same position as before. From a faraway distance, she looked as if she had not moved a single inch. But the leader felt something was off. He grabbed one of the subordinates he saw and pointed towards her, leaning closer to instruct him. Go and take a good look at her. I think she's awake. Yes, sir. The man had started walking, but then paused in his steps. And if she's awake, knock her out and keep her in place. She's a feisty one, so use this. The leader handed him the nearest weapon he could get his hands on, and it was the same butterfly knife that he was playing with earlier. Scare her with the knife, but make sure not to leave any permanent marks on her. We need that pretty little face of hers to remain unharmed. With one last pat, the leader excitedly walked out of the warehouse, lured by the idea of quickly testing out his new toy. The man eyed the useless butterfly dagger in his hand. Although the weapon was sharp and light, it was too small to do any proper damage. Releasing an aggravated sigh, he knew it was better to just take the knife instead of complaining about it. It was only his fifth day on the job, and he didn't want to get kicked out so quickly, especially when this was his first well-paying job. Zoe wasn't able to hear the exchange, but she did hear the sound of approaching footsteps. She was surprised to hear that this time around, only one man was coming nearer. Seems the heavens really favored her tonight. She waited until he was standing close enough to see the broken ropes before suddenly pouncing up, catching him by complete surprise. She quickly covered his mouth, muffling his panicked cry. She narrowly avoided the upcoming knife attack and saw her chance of success. She kept her eyes on the entrance and saw that the warehouse was practically empty as most of them went out to collect the supplies. Her temporary distraction gave him the chance to tackle her, and he nearly flipped her over his shoulder. So, he's a judo fighter, she thought to herself, immediately anticipating the moves he was about to make and quickly sidestepping them. Sorry about this, bud. She whispered to him as she repeatedly jammed her razor blade into his body. She could feel his struggle in her arms, but she didn't care anymore. She saw crimson stains starting to bloom on his white shirt, and her mind was flooded with memories. She blinked, and within seconds, she saw red. Without warning, she continued to jab her razor blade against his skin. Within seconds, he had collapsed onto the ground, bleeding all over the place. His bright red blood only triggered her further. She snatched the butterfly knife from his hand and used it to quickly cut the rope, tying her ankles. Right as the rope fell, she heard a whirring sound flying straight to her head. She swiftly ducked to the right. Thud. The knife struck the wall behind her. She breathed out in shock at the near-death experience and raised her head to see the leader with a furious expression on his face. Standing behind him were his men. This time, they were armed with guns. Well, 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 just as I've predicted, you're awake. He bellowed with anger. His face was distorted in fury, but his countenance was still calm for some reason. You will pay for killing one of my men with your own blood. He started to close the distance between them and chuckled at the way she held the dagger in front of her as if such a puny thing could do any harm to him. If you place the knife down and be a good girl, I'll think about showing you some mercy. He thought back to what his boss had told him. They just needed to beat her up, but she needed to be kept alive. He had been informed that she knew basic self-defense. However, her current stance highly suggested that she was ready to kill whoever dared to get in her way of escaping this situation. He didn't want to risk more of his men getting injured because that would require medical attention. None of his men would step foot into a hospital, knowing that the authorities would be notified instantly if they saw a knife or gun wounds. He just needed to make sure she would submit to him in order to prepare her for the exchange. Episode 103, A Frenzied Monster. Mercy? What kind? She pretended to ponder over the idea, when in reality, her eyes were scanning the men advancing towards her. Just then, she realized the weird stance they were in and the expression they were trying to hide. 
Although it was barely noticeable, she saw some of the men's eyes flicker between her and the boxes that surrounded her. Was that why they were so wary? In the corner of her eye, she deduced that the lids on the crates were only placed haphazardly and that from where she was standing, she could easily reach out to get the contents. I'll have less men attack you, he answered her. He gestured to his men to spread out and approach her from all sides. Capturing a woman was usually easy. This woman was unpredictable. Really? That's the best you got? She asked and suddenly placed her hand into the crate. He panicked upon seeing that and screamed, Grab her! He was not aware whether she knew how to use a gun, but those crates were definitely not empty. It was filled with unused firearms. Zoe felt the familiar hard plastic graze against her fingers, and she immediately knew what it was. She roughly yanked it out as shredded paper fillings fell on the floor. A slow and dangerous smile spread on her lips upon seeing the Mark 19 pistol. She marveled at the beauty of the gun before her, breathing out in astonishment. She ran her fingers over the beautiful metal piece. A dark chuckle left her lips. This fight hasn't even started yet, and she already won. But one gun wasn't enough. While they all rushed to grab her, she had felt around the crate and realized it was filled with an assortment of firearms. Judging from the guns she had pulled out, most were probably fully stocked with ammo. She was now on autopilot. Her eyes glazed over the minute her finger unlocked the trigger, and she allowed the beast within her to take over. Whoosh! Her left ear twitched, picking up the sound of a bullet flying straight towards her. At the last second, she managed to tilt enough that the bullet only grazed her skin before going right through the thin metal wall behind her. Her foot moved on her own, guiding her away from the bullets that were headed towards her. Closing her eyes, she inhaled deeply before firing the first shot. She felt as if her entire body was a machine in itself, dodging every bullet and weapon while she aimed at them. Bang! Screams reverberated throughout the warehouse. One of the men grabbed his leg in pure agony, collapsing onto his knee, and while his guard was down, a bullet flew into his forehead. A clean and instantaneous kill. It took merely ten minutes for the entire warehouse to light up with sparks, the smell of gunpowder permeating the air. The men who were previously surrounding her dropped like flies. More bullets pierced through the air, each shot a straightforward kill that left no room for mercy. Duck, shoot, duck, duck, shoot, bang, duck, bang. Like a frenzied monster freed from her chains, Zoe shot without hesitation. Each bullet was able to land perfectly on her target. The bloodlust in her eyes was terrifying. Her aim and speed were incredible, and although she never strayed far from the gun-filled crate, not a single movement had gone to waste. The combination of her footwork and marksmanship was incredibly deadly. Pistol at five o'clock, sniper at two, she muttered to herself. A bullet whirred past her once again, missing her body. She was ready to blast the Mark 19 on her hands towards five o'clock, but the gun only made clicking noises. No more bullets. She had been pulling out loaded Mark 19 pistols from the crate while tossing the empty ones at the side. This time around, she managed to pull out an assault rifle. Unlike the Mark 19 that was easier to use for precise shots, she had less control over assault rifles. It uses up bullets too quickly, and if one couldn't match the intensity of the different rounds of bullets fired all at once, they would be blown backwards due to its recoil. She dug her foot into the ground and hid behind the wooden crate. She breathed in deeply and exhaled through her mouth just as she took the daring decision to begin firing randomly. The first bullet grazed past the leader, who dodged in time, but that didn't mean the bullet had stopped moving. It struck the man right behind him. Liam! The leader roared, turning to face his fallen brother. His knees wobbled at the sight of blood pooling around his lifeless brother. Brother Liam! The sniper was distracted by the death of his longtime partner, and this was his first mistake. The second was leaving his defenses wide open. Before he could even start grieving, a bullet flew straight into his skull, coming out the other side. 28 down, two more to go. She thought to herself and aimed her assault rifle to where the pistol wielder was at, but he was gone. When she shifted around, she realized she too had let her guard down. Bang! 
bullet flew towards her, seconds away from landing in her skull. She gasped. Although she hurriedly dodged, the bullet still managed to deeply graze the side of her neck, blood instantly flowing from the wound. She had been moving too fast, which had caused the earlier wounds from her body to bleed profusely. Her adrenaline had started to die down, and her vision began to spin from the blood loss. She gritted her teeth and knew she couldn't afford to lose focus. Another round of shots was fired at her, but it felt like her eyes saw the bullets in slow motion. The fire spark came from three o'clock. Bang! She had managed to dodge and shoot another headshot. The man collapsed onto the ground, and instantaneously a pool of blood formed around him. The entire warehouse was covered with the blood of the fallen. The mixture of gunpowder smell and iron were pungent enough to clog her nose. Her eyes were apathetic and hazy as she nonchalantly glanced at the dead bodies littering the room. Liam, the leader sniffed, falling onto his knees as he cradled the head of his lifeless brother. Twenty-nine down, she muttered under her breath. She had entirely succumbed to her hidden beast. She stalked the pathetic leader who was threatening her earlier. One more to go. Her voice was airy and cold. Her own voice didn't sound familiar to her. She lifted her assault rifle. Her finger hovered over the trigger as she placed the barrel a few inches in front of the crying man. Before she got around to killing him, tens of men flooded into the warehouse, each one of them wearing protective gear. They were led by men holding bulletproof shields, followed by the others who wielded a variety of weapons. Helicopters whirred in the air just as the entire warehouse was surrounded by cars, more armored men climbing out of it. The car headlights from outside had filtered inside the warehouse, as well as the helicopter light through the window on the roof. A sudden blast of light forced her to cover her eyes. Despite the chaotic sound of hundreds of footsteps coming from all directions, one pair of footsteps stood out in particular. This one was heavier than the others. She felt his overwhelming and authoritative presence before she saw his face. She felt her heart drum in anticipation of the familiar aura that was stalking closer and closer to her. She removed her hand and her heart skipped a beat when she saw him. Walking in his full glory, long legs that seemed to stretch for miles, his suit jacket blowing in the wind, hair swept to the side, was the man she had fallen in love with. The same one who refused to leave her brain at any given second. Her heart calmed. With him here, she felt safe. Episode 104, Send the Entire Army After Him. Standing in front of her, with his hands tucked in his front pockets, was a man whose face and aura would put the gods to shame. Ryan? She whispered, blinking in confusion, while the dark shadow that covered her consciousness gradually disappeared. As the demon that had taken full control of her faded into the background, the bloodlust in her eyes slowly receded as well. Her eyes scanned the hundreds of men that swarmed into the room, their guns pointed straight at her. She looked around and saw the lifeless bodies on the floor. The pungent smell caused her nose to crinkle in disgust. She swallowed, knowing exactly who caused this mess. Ryan was at a loss for words. He had a hard time connecting this bloodthirsty woman to the frail one who had been securely tucked in his arms just a few hours earlier. When he was just a few meters away, he heard multiple gunshots being fired. He feared he had arrived too late, and when the gunshots slowed down, his sense of urgency further heightened. He had expected to see her naked body on the floor, covered in blood. He had expected to see her lifeless eyes, blue lips, and disfigured body covered in bullet wounds. Relief flooded his heart when he realized that she was still alive, and not the one covered in bullet holes. The pressure gripping his heart had loosened now that he saw she was safe. He looked at the dead bodies on the floor and noticed some men only had a bullet wound on their forehead. It was a one-shot kill. He stared at the assault rifle in her hand, trailing it to her fingers that was positioned over the trigger. 
with his brooding stare. She was not sure if he could accept the monster inside her and how messed up she is. Her heart ached at the idea, her face crumbling with each passing second. She felt a chill run through the warehouse and hugged her stomach as anxiety kicked in. She took a few steps backward to create distance between them. I, I, I... She didn't know where to begin, and it didn't take long for her to nearly stumble over her own feet. Her bloodthirst is now gone, and all she could feel was prickling pain at the thought of his rejection. The dangerous woman from before was nowhere in sight, and what replaced her was a hesitant and frail-looking doll that looked as if she might break any minute. Ryan saw her attempt to create further distance between them. His eyes took in her messy appearance. She had a wounded forehead, one of her cheeks were swollen, and blood was trickling from her neck. He couldn't even tell where else she was bleeding from anymore. Anger flashed across his face. Who did it? Who was foolish enough to harm his woman? When she saw his displeased expression as he looked at her, she felt her world crumble into fine dust. Tears burned at the back of her eyes, threatening to fall as a lump formed in her throat. She prepared her heart for the hurtful things she was sure he was about to say. Her heart was hammering so fast against her chest, she thought it would burst. She wasn't scared of his burning anger or the insanity hidden within his heart. She wasn't scared of his fury that burnt hot and fast, turning everything in its path into ashes. She was scared of what came after the anger. She was terrified of the ice-cold demeanor he used on strangers and that he could give her the same treatment. To be rejected by him would be worse than experiencing the harshest frostbite on the coldest day of winter. She sniffled and braced herself for the pain that would soon come. Say something, she whispered, though she knew he couldn't hear her. When he still didn't move or change his expression, what little self-esteem she had left disappeared. She attempted to blink away her tears, refusing to let it trickle in front of so many people. Hugging her stomach tighter, she cast her eyes downward so that he was no longer in her view. Will Geller saw his brother's frozen expression while he just stared at the woman before him. He couldn't believe what Ryan was doing. He had mobilized a lot of their resources just to find his woman, and when he finally does, he just stands there instead of running towards her and sweeping her into his arms. Did he really send so many people here just to have a staring competition? He frowned, turning to look at the poor woman hurting because of his brother's frozen stance. If his idiotic brother didn't do something, she might really cry. He roughly nudged Ryan and hissed, Don't just stand there like a fool. Go get your woman. Don't you see she's injured? That tiny push was all he needed to start walking towards her. He was too caught up with ideas of torture for those who inflicted pain upon her to realize his silence was breaking her. His footsteps were slow at first, steadily increasing until he found himself speed walking towards her. Zoe, he breathed out, taking off his large suit jacket and swung it in the air like a magnificent cape. It fluttered in the wind as he placed it upon her shoulders. Immediately after, he pulled her into his arms in a tight hug that nearly crushed her bones. You're safe. I'm here. His first sentence was from the relief of finding her alive. The next was an apology for arriving too late and putting her in this state. Flashes of her expertly playing with a dagger at the banquet and pulling out a gun in her bedroom danced across his mind. He should have known better. Even with the recollection, he was still bewildered to see her in action. The lifeless bodies on the floor, her finger on the trigger, her bloodthirsty eyes. Just who was this woman? Zoe was surprised by his hug and could barely register the warm gesture in her mind. Her arms were still wrapped around her stomach. The familiar feeling of being enveloped in his arms had calmed her heart. Her eyes tiredly fluttered close. Slowly, softly, she became unconscious in his arms. Faint screaming could be heard in the background. The voice she always wanted to hear kept telling her to stay awake. The sound was getting farther and farther until her entire world of black became quiet. Episode 105, Never Forget. A week went by and Zoe was still unconscious. Why hasn't she woken up? 
Ryan was growing impatient at the lack of progress. He anxiously paced back and forth in our hospital room. He walked this same path repeatedly all day and night over the past week. He gritted his teeth and his jaw tightened. He hated this place. He hated the familiar smell of the hospital disinfectant. This place reminded him of the last time she was hospitalized. Two times. He arrived too late, two times. And both times, someone had been able to harm her. He had a hard time falling asleep. And with Zoe's current condition, he had spent almost every minute of the past week awake. The composed, domineering, and calculative CEO image he was once known for was nowhere in sight. Ryan was beyond exhausted. His dark circles had gotten worse, and there were heavy bags under his eyes. It was the second time she fainted before him, but this was the first time he thought he might actually lose her. That night, she had been frighteningly pale, and her fingers had started to turn blue. Because of the excessive blood loss and bruised body, he was horrified when he watched a new team of doctors enter the surgery room mid-operation. The injuries she sustained on her head, neck, and abdomen placed her in critical condition. As he anxiously waited outside the operating room, memories of the night flashed by his mind. He would never forget the way his heart stopped beating when he saw her eyes roll back and her body slumped against his. He would never forget how she looked at him, heartbroken with his rejection, as his feet remained glued to the spot. He had spent the last seven nights lying awake on the extra bed he had them arrange in Zoe's room. He regretted coming so late and not reacting in time to help her. Her distraught expression at his lack of action was one that would scar him for the rest of his life. Two weeks later. Beep, beep, beep. So he groaned, growing more and more agitated at the obnoxious sound. Why can't it shut up? Just as she moved her hand, she winced in pain. She felt as if her body had been run over by a truck. She heard a loud crash in the background. Something huge seemed to have broken from the impact. What followed after were shuffling of clothes and a thud on the wall, as if a body was shoved into it. It's been two weeks and you still haven't stabilized her condition? How incompetent and useless! A familiar voice roared, resembling a provoked predator. Mr. West, you have to calm down. S sir please calm down! Bam! Something roughly collided on the wall. It sounded as if someone had punched it. Mr. West, stop it. The doctor can't rush the healing process. Shut up. He snarled and roughly shoved his younger sister away from him. She yelped, stumbling over her high heels. Will, who was standing quietly at the side, helped stabilize her as his eyes narrowed at Ryan. Ryan, you're going too far. Will frowned at the barbaric behavior of his older brother. They had encountered so many problems in both the West Enterprise and the Underworld, yet this was the first time he saw his older brother lose his composure like this. Incompetent doctors shouldn't work here. Joshua, have his license revoked. A quiet voice spoke out. That's not necessary. She could barely speak properly. Her voice timid due to her scratchy throat from an entire week of dehydration. Every head in the room snapped to the hospital bed, where Zoe barely had her eyes opened. She tilted her head to look at the West siblings. Their similar appearances had varying expressions on them. Frankie looked as if she was on the verge of tears as her hands came up to cover her mouth in disbelief. Will wore a nonchalant, nearly bored expression, as if he didn't care if she woke up or not. Ryan, on the other hand, had a completely different expression from his younger siblings. She had lost weight from having to rely on IV to keep her hydrated. Her face no longer swollen, but she was still pale while her forehead and neck had been bandaged. Her hair was an oily mess from not being washed for two weeks. Despite her flawed appearance, Ryan looked at her as if she was an angel who descended from heaven. He looked awestruck by her. On the other hand, Zoe was surprised to see his appearance. He was still handsome, but gone was the polished man she knew. It was obvious he had been deeply upset for a long time. Zoe shuffled in her position. She awkwardly eyed Ryan, who was close to strangling the poor doctor. G good morning, she croaked out. Oh, so? 
Frankie sniffed, nearly sobbing on the spot as she began to walk towards Zoe, arms spread for a hug. I'm so glad you're awake! Ow! She cried out when Ryan shoved her aside, rushing to Zoe. Before anyone could move, he had wrapped his arms around her. Zoe stiffened in surprise, her arms laying limp on her side. He was hunched over, hugging her as if she was the only thing that mattered in the world. Her eyes softened. He was scared of losing her, just as much as she was scared of losing him. Ryan, her voice was muffled by his hug. I'm not letting you go, he said, already guessing what she would say. Ryan moved to sit by her side while shifting his arms to loosely wrap it around Zoe's waist, giving her space to breathe. He tilted his head to look at his siblings. You heard her. She wants water. He instructed his siblings as if they were his maids. Will turned to Frankie. You heard him. Go get your best friend some water. Her jaw dropped at his words. No, stupid. He was talking to you. Zoe needs her best friend and boyfriend here. You can leave. Will rolled his eyes, staring down at her, who is half a head shorter than him. I'm older than you. Regardless, if he told me to fetch it or not, you still have to go. He was a proud senior, bullying his junior. Frankie glared at him, refusing to back down. She remained stubbornly rooted to her spot. Joshua sighed. He decided to be the bigger person here. I'll get it. He walked out to fetch the cup of water that started the entire argument. He came back in less than a few seconds and handed the cup of water to Ryan. The water dispenser was literally outside of the door. Joshua resisted the urge to roll his eyes.